teachers, I'm Jen Mead, and I created Health at School to try to help health educators design skills-based authentic learning experiences for their students. I'm really excited to share my advocacy project for high school students with you today. So let's dig in and get a tour of what it might be like. This project lasts about 14 days, but before you get started with the project, you're going to want to survey both your staff K-12 and your high school students. So I do a health needs survey for my students in the school, not just in my health classes. And then I also send it to my K-12 staff to get an idea of what they think students' health needs are. And that data is used when we're actually determining a priority health need for which to advocate. Once I've done those surveys and I've gotten the results back, I can actually start the project with my students. So eventually my students will get a 10 page digital workbook that I can assign via Google Classroom and they can complete inside of Google Slides. But before they get that workbook, I start by introducing the idea of advocacy. So what is advocacy? I like sharing a story to help students understand what it is. So I tell students that there's someone walking down a path beside a river and their peaceful walk is disrupted by the screams from someone struggling in the water. And when they look over, they see someone is close to drowning. So they dive into the water and they pull the person safely to the river's edge. But as soon as they do, they see two more people flailing in the water. So with Herculean effort, they go back into the water, hook both people under their arms and swim them to safety. Well, they continue to exhaustion, saving some but losing many to the currents of the river. I explain that this person is a good Samaritan. They see a problem and they immediately take action to help. An advocate sees a problem and they look for the root causes. So in this story, an advocate might be someone who goes upriver and figures out that there's a footpath that is faulty and so people are falling into the river or a negligent rafting company who's sending people onto the river without the appropriate safety equipment. Advocates help address the root causes of problems. In society, we really need both types of people. We need good Samaritans to address problems immediately, and we need advocates to seek the source of those problems and try and address those problems at their root cause. Another thing that helps me to explain what advocacy is, is by showing some examples to students. So I usually let students choose from the grid a couple of these things that they find personally interesting, the images link to videos and the text links to websites. And this helps students get an idea of current advocacy efforts as they relate to help. At this point, I actually assign that digital workbook and what you see on the screen is their first page. We talk about how most successfully ad advocacy campaigns begin with a personal passion. And that's illustrated in every example they see from the previous slide. So I want students to reflect on their experiences as teens and figure out what's personally important to them. What are the most pressing health needs and why do they think those things are health needs for students? Then I want students to analyze the data because data gives that passion and power. So they're going to go through and look at the results from the student survey, the staff survey, and look at national trends through the reader's behavior survey results. When they do this, there are questions in their digital workbook where they can identify things that are coming up repeatedly. Now the Youth Risk Behavior Survey document is thick, it's about 108 pages. So you can direct students to the executive summary to pull their conclusions from that. Or what I like to do is divide the students into groups and give each group a particular chapter to analyze and then have everybody share back their conclusions about what they learned with regards to national trends and adolescent risk behavior. Once they've looked at all of the data, they need to start to identify what things are priority health needs. So they're going to look to see what things come up frequently. Are there things that come up as national health concerns that are also concerns of our staff or our students? And those items that show up frequently, we're going to compile into a list. Once we've compiled that list, we can code that list by putting a star next to items that are personally important, 
putting a check mark next to items that have easy fixes. This would be something we can make an easy change and impact with. And circling any items that are of critical importance. By doing so, we'll be able to see visually which topics or issues really are priority health needs. Now at this point, as a teacher, you have some decisions to make. Before you proceed with the project, you want to decide if your class is going to become its own advocacy agency. In other words, the class chooses one priority health need for which to advocate. This is a really powerful choice because you have a lot of hands working on the same project, and so you can have a very impactful project. Um, it also makes managing the project from a teacher's perspective a little bit easier if each class is working on a project as opposed to every individual student or small groups working on a project. To give you an idea, one year I had students address bullying and so they created a whole month bullying prevention campaign where groups worked on morning announcements and posters and identifying outside agencies that could come in and do school assemblies. Um, so the good thing about working as a class is that you could have a, um, a bigger impact perhaps. The downside is, is if some students aren't interested in that particular health need, motivation might become an issue. So you might want to allow smaller groups to work on different health needs if that's necessary. One year I had a class that decided to address teenage pregnancy prevention and I had a group of four or five students who were completely not interested and so they did a separate advocacy project themselves. Once you've made that decision, whether you're going to go class, group, or individual project, we need to reach consensus about what health need is most important or worth advocating for. So they can look back at the list they compiled. The one that has stars and circles and checks is probably the best topic to address. And then they also have to choose their target audience. Who could they influence? Who could impact the greatest change? Do they focus on students, a particular group of students, staff, parents, the school board, community agencies? Once they've selected their priority health need and their target audience, they need to write a compelling rationale. So their rationale is used to help them seek approval for their projects, potentially gain funding or donations they need to implement strategies. It has to be convincing. It has to reference the data that they've already analyzed. It should identify risks if we don't do anything and the benefits of taking action now. It should be well written and ultimately it should make the reader really care and want to take action. So I always have a sample project so that I can refer to each phase of the project in a sample to help explain and coach students through what we're doing as a class. Then we come back to this grid of examples of advocacy because the next step is choosing the appropriate strategy for that priority help me and that target audience. So to help spark creativity, we pick a few more examples of advocacy to look at, focusing specifically on what their strategies are. Um, did they develop a new technology? Did they raise funds? Did they raise awareness? Did they seek additional legislation by writing to Congress people? So this might spark some creativity so that they can come up with a strategy for their project. That being said, it also helps to ask other people. So, I encourage students to talk with their families about the priority health need. Maybe they have experience that would help them come up with a good idea. Maybe look into organizations that are already advocating for this priority health need. What do they do? Could we use some of their strategies or partner with them? We want to brainstorm the biggest list possible. So we're going to accept all ideas without judgment because maybe it's that wild idea that sparks the the creative juices that allows us to come up with a strategy that works. Once we have that big list of strategies, we want to rank them. So we're going to look at each strategy and think about feasibility and effectiveness. How doable is each strategy given our own abilities and our time constraints? And how effective will each strategy be at addressing the priority health need and specifically our target audience? Once we've ranked those, we get an idea of what strategy might be the best to pursue. So we come to consensus about that strategy 
and then we have to do some really careful planning and take deliberate action to make it happen. So this could be a hypothetical project, what would you do? But I encourage you to take it all the way to implementation and have students execute their advocacy strategies so they can actually impact the change in their school and community. When they're planning, it's important that they take into consideration the talents of the people that are working with, assigning creative tasks to people who are good at that, tech tasks to people who are good at that. You want to build into your action plan checkpoints where people are seeking necessary approval. So I had um, a class that started a physical activity club. They needed to find a staff advisor. They needed to get facilities request forms to be able to have a space for their club to meet. So we want to build those approvals right into the process. We also want to continue a little bit of research, looking into agencies that are already doing something similar, finding out what works well for them, if they have materials or products that we could use in our own strategies. And then we want to actually execute the plan. So we have to work through each of those action steps. Um, as you do this, you want the students and you to take on um, these roles where you're checking in with each other to make sure you're on the right track, seeing if things need revision, if there's additional suggestions. On these work days, you have an opportunity as a teacher to do those check-ins. The thing that does happen on work days, however, is there might be a student with nothing to do because it's not to that phase of the project. So I like to build in some independent learning activities for students on those days. It could be something as simple as a, a reading enrichment activity, a video they could watch independently. I've actually built mini lessons that correspond to each of those sample advocacy groups that you see. That helps me cover some of the functional knowledge that I don't otherwise cover in the curriculum things about organ donation or sepsis, for example. And those are available through Health at School if you'd like to add those into your project as well. So students need a few days at the very least to actually execute the strategy. Um, in the sample project, students had um, addressed the mental health of sexual minority youth as their priority health need, and they wanted to target sexual minority youth by making them feel seen, and understood and providing them with resources that were tailored specifically to their needs. So um, after researching other advocacy organizations that work with similar goals, they put together an infographic that could be displayed on the inside of the bathroom stall door that would provide additional resources, even a QR code that students could scan with their phone to get right to those resources. So you want students to make it all the way to implementation. I had students who went and spoke to the school board to advocate for the addition of a grab-and-go breakfast program, and they were successful. Next fall, we had a grab-and-go breakfast program. So these projects can have some really um, positive impacts on our school community and the health and wellness of students. After they've implemented their strategy, we want them to take time to learn from that by reflecting what went really well, if they had more time, different talents, what could they add to their project to make it more impactful? And these things can also inform future projects that you do with upcoming classes. And then as a teacher, you take some time to evaluate their success. What you see on the screen are the performance indicators from National Health Education Standard 8. So you can actually check to see if your students demonstrated those skills over the duration of that 14-day project. I hope that you give this advocacy a project to go with your high school students. It's an excellent learning experience for students and an opportunity to see growth in your health and wellness in your overall school community. Take care.